I'm leaning on the Medusa tree. A quite unique looking tree that's developed as a result of many, many years ago being cut down and the subsequent growth, which seems to be lessening over the years as some of them die off, has led to it being called the Medusa tree because it was vaguely reminiscent and similar to the hair of the Medusa. Now, I don't have a problem with hair, as many of you can tell, but I do have something of a conundrum, or a problem, you could say, but it's a nice problem, and it involves two leaf mines. Now, don't all switch off. Leaf mines and the moths that create these leaf mines are especially interesting. They're very much under-recorded in most counties across the UK, and Nottinghamshire is no exception to that. There are few people bothering to record leaf mines, and they should because the micro-moths, to many people, aren't really moths at all and have no interest whatsoever to them, preferring to do the recording of the larger cousins, the macro-moths, but the micro moths contain some absolutely beautiful moths and some of them are so tiny you can barely see them with the naked eye. They're tiny little moths. Amazingly, the larva of many species can live between the upper and lower surfaces of leaves such as this one here, which I suspect at the moment is some kind of a sorbus or maybe some kind of cretaceous or hawthorn. But on these leaves, these beautiful golden yellow leaves, are some quite interesting leaf mines, and they're Philinorycta mines. And something just doesn't ring right with me. There are several species that it could be, and in fact, on the tree that these are taken from, I think there are an, at least an, one, maybe two more species of Philinorycta occupying in the leaves of that particular tree. These mines are long. They're quite what we call inflated, where if you look at the surface, the upper surface, the mine is raised in almost like a ridge. And that's all created from underneath because these mines are underside mines. And these upper surface of the leaves of the leaf mines are actually almost completely devoid of any green on them at all. They're almost clear and when if you hold them up to the light they are see-through. So what species is it? Well there are a couple. I think one species that's on the tree is Philinorycta sorbii. But these mines don't look right for sorbii. They're all quite long, they're all in excess of an inch or 25 mil. They're, some of them certainly 30 mil. I have a little hunch I could be wrong, I don't know. It depends on what I can discover when I get home, but I think these may well be the leaf mines of Philinorycta mespillella, and that's a species that I've never seen before and I don't think is all that widespread or has been recorded all that much across Nottinghamshire over the years. I'm presuming it is on the Nottinghamshire list, but we'll see. I could be wrong. It could just be another species of Philinorycta, maybe one that feeds on Hawthorn and is on this, or one that feeds on Sorbus more regularly and is on this particular tree. But the first thing I need to do is really identify the tree that it's on. But it's an interesting little conundrum and it will give me something to do later on today when I've done filming this. Thankfully, the Medusa tree has stayed put and has withheld my weight and has allowed me to ponder on the identity of these leaf mines. Good thing about leaf mines, you can take them off the tree, the leaves are falling off of this particular sorbus or cretaceous, whatever it is, as I take hold of them and so you're doing nothing detrimental to the tree by taking the leaf mines home and in fact there you can spend more time photographing them against the light of a lighted window or the sunlight going through the window and you can examine them properly and key them out they're not the impossible things many people think they are
the determination of most leaf miners doesn't involve one of these things. You don't need one of these for everything, but in some cases you do need to refer to the use of a microscope. But in general, most leaf mines can be keyed out quite easily on the aspects and facets of the mine itself and the frass contained within the mine. And there's some brilliant keys on the UK Leaf Miners website don't be put off by keys. This is a very easy key compared to if you start dealing with flies. If you think that looking and determining leaf mines is difficult, then stay well away from anything dipterous. But for some species, especially Philonoictus, determination by decent magnification on a microscope is indeed necessary because some species are identical. The mines are largely identical identical in size and construction and the number of creases etc and the lava can be almost identical too. In those cases we need to look quite often at the chromaster on the end of the chrysalis itself. Not always is an easy task trying to extract a tiny chrysalis from a tiny cocoon within a tiny leaf mine but with the aid of some tweezers and one of these, whoever trusted me with a scalpel, I'll never know, and a small soft paintbrush. It is possible with sometimes great dexterity to extract the pupa out of a very small and paper thin cocoon, but that's better than cutting the actual bottle. That's what I, I think anyway. And by putting the chrysalis under the microscope, turning it in such a way that the back end of the chrysalis can be seen, we can then look at the hooks which make up the chromaster. Now, the chromaster in most Philonorictus varies con considerably, quite a lot of difference. And so I've been able to determine the species that uh, I thought was at Sherwood Forest, and it's not what I thought it was. Surprising, because I was quite convinced over the last couple of days since I collected those mines that those mines were indeed Philonorictus mespillella. They're not. Determination by the chromaster in this instance reveals that the culprit is another species which I did mention in the video, and it's Philonorictus sorbi. Not a particularly common species in Nottinghamshire. Most of the records are contained within the Sherwood Forest area, but there again, who goes looking for leaf mines in Nottinghamshire? But it may well turn out to be quite common. So, identity revealed without having to chop the adult moth up. The pupa that I do have, the chrysalis that I do have, although only three were in the pupal stage, two are still larva and some of the other mines were unoccupied and that's often a, yeah, the case when you're looking at leaf mines quite often the leaf mine will have been vacated or the larva have been parasitized long before you come and have a look at it so with an hour's work trying to extract the pupa or the chrysalis from the cocoon within the leaf mine putting it under the microscope we have an accurate determination and we don't have to bother the county recorder in the process. Give them more time to sit there doing nothing. So, not a new species as I was hoping for the Sherwood Forest area, but a nice record of a moth rarely recorded.